And your mountains seem so tall And you realize life's not always fair You can run away and hide Let the old man decide Or you can change your circumstances with a prayer
That is saying that we have somebody to trust. Doesn't it? <coughs> Jamie said that in her song that you can praise the herd away. That means that even in our difficult times of life, that we can praise Him and we can trust Him to do something about it. So this morning, that's what we want to look at, is learning to trust God. I think I even mentioned a little bit about that in the sermon last Sunday morning. But we trust is a big word, isn't it? And uh, we always think that, you know, we see on our coins or we see in our license plate, in God we trust. But there comes a time in our life that I think that uh, when we see a lot of that changing, kind of, you know, taking away from all some of the money and all of these things. And uh, we find a lot of people not trusting God but trusting other things. But he says to you and I, first of all, that we have to accept the challenge of trusting God. Trust in the Lord, he says, with all your heart. That, again, that word trust, I think that as I begin to pray about that and think about the message, that in every, every good and great relationship, there is trust, isn't there? <coughs> Not just trust of God, but I, I think about these folks who have been married 50, 60, 70 years, and there had to be a sense of trust in there, even in that relationship, to for that marriage to go on that many years, doesn't it? Same way, and you young people, I will say this to you. You know, if you, you, you need to have a, a sense of trust about you when you begin a relationship there who will never, ever work. But when we think about our trusting God, it is not simply that kind of trust. It is trusting Him, it says, with all of our heart. We have to learn to accept the challenge of trusting Him. I know that <laughs> as we were kids growing up, and we would accept the challenge to do something, and they would say, I dare you. And then they would say, I double dare you. And then they would say, I double dog dare you. What a challenge. And regardless of what the outcome was going to be, you would do it. Because you didn't want somebody to know that they double dog dared you and you didn't do it. But when we're talking about trusting our Lord, we learn to challenge, we accept the challenge of trusting Him because He said to trust in the Lord with all your heart. In other words, He's saying, as I think I even mentioned last Sunday, that He says to take up your cross daily and follow me. In other words, that when we learn to accept the challenge of trusting Him, we put it all in His hands. And it's hard to do, isn't it? That's very difficult to do. I was thinking, as a matter of fact, we were talking yesterday, we've been blessed so far, you know, and, and we will continue to be, but uh, we've had the girls, well, Miranda got home from Allstate yesterday, and, but we've had the girls, Melissa went out of town on Friday to see Andy, and, and so we're blessed with them, but then Josie, we got to talking about Josie's next up for license. Then, you know, she's the next one up for getting her permit and getting her license and getting a car and, and all these things. So then last night, yesterday when Miranda came home, we went out to her house and picked up her car and uh, brought it at our house because they stayed with us last night. And, and so she wanted to get out and drive this morning, and she did. She done a great job. But sometimes it's just hard to turn loose, isn't it, to say, here it is. I go out and scrape the windows for her and give her, put her on the road. I'm thinking, oh, it's snowing out. I trust that automobile, not necessarily trusting her, but not trusting that automobile. But we, we learn to, to place them in the hands of God and say, God, you take care of them. But when it comes to trusting Him with our whole heart, it means that, God, I am placing everything in your hands. Wow. To be able to trust Him for our safety and security. I know a lot of times when we say we trust God, we'll trust Him for things, but when it comes to our safety and security, sometimes we want to do that ourselves, don't we? But, but when we, we want me to realize is that if we want to trust Him wholly, take up our cross daily and follow Him, we've got to trust Him for our safety and our security. Now I realize that out here on this parking lot, <laughs> you can trust one thing. If you get the ice underneath that snow, you're going down. And I pray that somebody will have a camera. <laughs> because we could win $100,000 on that thing. On America's Funniest Videos. But, but obviously, when we do that, we fall. The first thing we do is we get up and look, make sure nobody else is looking before we even find out they're hurt or not. But I get to thinking that there's a lot of things that we can trust. When it comes to our true safety, we put in His hands. 
our security. When it comes to our peace of mind, we have to learn to trust God for that. <laughs> because let me tell you something, folks. I know that, uh, you know, we, the Bible tells us not to fret and to worry, but, but I've got news for you. If you're a parent, if you're a grandparent, if you're anything, you're going to worry about your children, aren't you? You can't help that. You don't really want to, but you do. So sometimes you can't have the peace of mind that you'd like to have. But I want you to know this. When we, when we accept the challenge of trusting God, He will give us the peace of mind that we need. Because we give it to Him and He says, it's in my hands. Friday morning, went to visit a friend of mine and who was dying of cancer. And actually, he died Friday afternoon. But went to visit with him and visit with his family that morning. And, and I told her, as I put my arms around her, I said, you know, there's nothing we can do but put everything in God's hands. And I said, she said, you know, I, 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 I know that death is coming to each of us. And it's something we have to face. I said, yes, it is. I said, but you know what? We can have that peace of mind of knowing that God will take care of us. Even when it, if we that are saved, when it comes time to, to cross that river, we have the peace of mind of knowing that it's all okay. Peace of mind that we place it in God's hand and say, God, I want the peace of mind of knowing that it is well with my soul. We said so we want a lot of peace of mind. We were watching yesterday, uh, Josie and, and, and Jeanette and, and the girls and I, where we were watching something about somebody had, uh, oh, they were talking about the lottery. Well, a guy had won $49 million and won something about, on all this. And, and they said, well, you know, someone said, well, my life won't change at all. Lady. They're crazy. And they said, my life wouldn't change. They would start going through different things and, and how they spent their money and all these things and, and all that kind of stuff. And then one of them, the guy that had won $49 million, said tragedy came after that. His wife had a stroke. And I, and I get to think, wow, you know what? No matter how much you have, it's still, everything's still in God's hands. And no matter how much we own or possess, we cannot buy a peace of mind that we have. <coughs> Not a bit of peace of mind. Wow. I talked on the phone the other day to someone. And, <laughs> matter of fact, he was talking actually about his sister-in-law. He said, you know, Tom? He said, my sister-in-law has had money all of her life. Lots of money. She has a big home down there. A 17-room home. And, and she said, he said, you know what? After my brother died, he said, she still doesn't have any peace. He said the fact, she said the matter, he said the fact of the matter is, he said that she complains about everything that goes on. He said no matter what she has, she does not have peace of mind anywhere. And I said what she needs to learn to do is trust God for that. Wow. We trust him. We learn to trust him, the challenge of trusting him for our safety and security. We learn to trust him for that peace of mind that only God can give when he said, trust in the Lord with all your heart. And the thing about it is he also said that we learn to trust him for every need that we have. Over in Psalm chapter 37 and verse 3, get this. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed, and feed on his faithfulness. Letting me know that I can trust God to meet my needs. Now, folks, again, you've heard me say a lot of times that we get our needs and our wants mixed up a lot of times. I, uh, of course, raised in the car business. I've been in the car business, and I'll never forget sometimes people would come in and say, man, you know, I, I want this car. I need this car. I need this. I need this. And you look at one they have, and it's almost as good as the one they've got. And you look, you really need it, or do you just want it? Oh, I need it. Folks, we get our needs and our wants mixed up all the time, don't we? God didn't say that on this earth he'd make all of us rich financially. But God did say, you trust me for your needs. God did say, and you can feed on my faithfulness. Man, I, and we can trust God to be faithful to us through all situations. I want you to know that. Sometimes we, we, we may ponder, God, where are you? Well, God is there, but, but we need to learn to depend on Him for our needs. I was at the house the other day, and a lady had called, and needing some food. 
And uh, I, I, she called me about once a month. And so we begin to talk. And then I begin to talk to some other churches around where she lives. Talk to them about helping her. And they said, well, we can't help her anymore because we've helped her so many times. And all this and, 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 and different churches around her. So I get to thinking a lot of times that too often we think, well, God's going to supply my needs. But I, and all I have to do is just sit down and, and just wait for people to bring it to me. i got news for you. You sit down and wait for people to bring it to you. That's going to be one of the greatest diets you've ever had. <laughs> you know that? Because they're not going to bring it. But the thing about it is, when we get down, and God, we trust you for your faithfulness, then we need to understand that he will supply our needs according to his riches and glory. Wow. So we trust him for our needs. We have the challenge of trusting him for forgiveness of our sins. I think that so often many people think, how do I know? How do I know that when I accept Jesus Christ that all of my sins are forgiven me? Because he said so. Because he said so in his word. And I believe him. I believe the day that I came to Jesus Christ that he took that eraser, if you will, and he wiped my sins away and erased those. And he said, listen, I forgive you. If every one of those. Remember, remember the story of the man in, in prison and, and the preacher went to see him and told him, he said, well, well, I want you to do it because the guy said, God will never forgive me. He said, I want you to write down everything on that wall over there that you don't think you can be forgiven of. And when I come back, we'll talk about it. And so he, the preacher came back in a week or so and the man had a whole, room, whole wall full of stuff. And the preacher went over and looked at him and he took the same pen that he had, same picture that he had, and he said, I'm a liar. And the, the preacher went through there and said, just mark it off. He said, well, why'd you mark it off? He said, when you trust Jesus, that will be forgiven you. He said, how about murder? The preacher went over, scratched it out, and he said, when you really trust Jesus, that will be forgiven you. The law won't forgive you, but Jesus does. So how do you... We have to learn to depend on Him and trust Him that He's forgiven us of all of our sin. And I want to promise you this. That the moment you know Jesus Christ, the devil will begin to bring those sins up to you no matter what you do. You know that? But all you need to do is say, hey, go see Jesus about it. Because He's forgiven me. So we trust Him for forgiveness. We learn to trust Him for salvation. For by grace shall you save through faith. And that not of yourselves, he said. But it's a gift of God, not of our works, he said, lest any man should boast. So we trust him. We trust the fact that Jesus, who was born of a virgin, Jesus, who went to Calvary, laid his life there on Calvary, Jesus, who died there on that, on that cross. Jesus, who was put in the tomb, rose again the third day. Jesus, who ascended to be with the Father. Jesus, who's at the right hand of the Father saying, Father, this is mine. Forgive them of all their sins. You trust Him for that. You trust Him. Don't try to work it out. You know, the Bible says work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. He's not saying that you've got a job to do about getting things done, how to get it worked out. He said what you have to do is this. You go to him on your own. You go. No one else can do it for you. You trust him for salvation. You learn to trust him for the assurance that you have. It goes back in a sense of that peace of mind. I'm glad I can lay down at night knowing, knowing. That if Jesus came today, or if death came, I'd be in the presence of Jesus, my Savior. Amen. Knowing that I'm His, and He is mine. So we accept the challenge of trusting God. Look at verse 5 again. <laughs> the second part of that. And lean not under your own understanding. Not only accepting the challenge of trusting God, but how about following the practicality of trusting God. Trust His ways, not yours. Oh, Proverbs chapter 28 and verse 26. As Solomon is writing, talking about trusting God and trusting our own ways. Chapter 28 and verse 26, he says, He who trusts in his own heart is a fool, but whoever walks wisely will be delivered. J.D. and I were talking and they were talking before Sunday school this morning and uh, talking about people getting saved. And, and I told mentioned to, about a fellow one time who said to me, as long as my good 
outweighs my bad, then I will be okay. That's trusting in his own way, not trusting in God's way. We can be as good as we want to be. And we can, we can be so good that we've never said a bad word or anything, I've never even thought a bad word. Well, but you know what? The Bible says, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man come to the Father but by me. So we don't lean on our understanding, but we lean on Him. We trust His ways, not ours. Because you see, when we learn to trust our ways instead of Him, we become very prideful. And then pride, He says, <laughs> brings a fall in our life. Take heed, lest you fall. Look at what I have done, perhaps. Look at how what I have accomplished in my life. I, uh, <laughs> sometimes you read the obituary, and I'm not ridiculing anyone, but sometimes you read the obituary, they've got so much in there that you didn't know about. You thought you knew that person. They have so much of what they have accomplished and what they have done. At the same time, you never see them affiliated. They don't mention Jesus. They don't mention him. It's usually he's of the Baptist faith. That could mean anything. <laughs> what I'm saying, follow the practicality of trusting God. Trust his ways, not yours. And then the third thing I thought about when I was reading this again, we have to learn to use the application of trusting God. Look at, look at verse 6. In all your ways, acknowledge Him. Jamie just sang the song and said, We can praise the her way. In all our ways, acknowledge Him. Give Him praise for all things. It goes back again, doesn't it? To not lean to our ways, boasting what we've done or what we can, what we what you know, have what we've accomplished. But we give him praise for all things. That's why a lot of times I like to ask for praise reports. And it was a good praise report. We heard this morning a different occasion. A great praise report. Everybody got here safely. But in everything he said, give God praise. David writes in the Psalm 150, let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Wow. It's him again who woke you up this morning. And yeah, it's him who done that. In everything, praise Him. Let your testimony, He says, in all your ways acknowledge Him. So what do you say? Let your testimony be certain ways. Let your testimony be unceasing. In other words, it's not what you say, but it's how you live your life every day. That's your testimony. What do people see in you? Let your testimony be great at home. You want to find out how a man lives at home and, and uh, what his testimony is at home, ask his children or ask his wife. Same thing with the wife. You ask the husband or ask the children what kind of life they live at home. People think a lot of times it's not really necessary to give them for my life to really shine in front of my children or at home. That, that's my private time. That's my personal space. That's the greatest place you ought to leave your testimonies at home. For your children to see. For your spouse to see. Because you see, when it comes to your children, God says, I'm loaning them to you for a while. And I know some of you say, well, God, when are you going to take them back? <laughs> Especially when they get to be teenagers. But I know you don't say that. Not really. Because you got to realize, some of you, well, all of you, were teenagers at one time too. Our parents prayed the same prayer. It didn't work. But what I'm saying is this. They're long to us for a while. And God says, while you have them, you teach them. You train them. And the best training and the best teaching they have is how you live. And I, and, and I tell people a lot of times when I'm counseling uh, for marriage, I said, I want you to know something as, as a man too when you have children. You want your children you know, if you want your young boys, if you have a boy and you want them to grow up to, to, to make sure they love their wife, well, you better learn to love your wife in front of them. Should be amen, ladies, from everyone. 
could you learn to love yours and show that love? But he said, trust him. Let your testimony be unceasing. Let your testimony be great at home. Let your testimony be empowered by the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Let it be empowered by the Holy Spirit. You see, Jesus said, when I come into your heart, I come to dwell within you. I come to empower you. Let your, let your testimony, he says, be without shame or fear. He said, Lean not on understand. In all your ways, acknowledge him. Don't be afraid to tell somebody or to show somebody that you are Christian. Don't let it be a, don't be ashamed of that fact. Be bold about it. That's what he's saying. In all your ways, acknowledge him. Yeah, we want to we thank him. You know, we, we have Thanksgiving Day and, and we say, oh, that's a time we give thanks, and it, it is, but but we give him thanks every day. Praise Him every day because we put it all in His hands. And you know what? He's done pretty good. He's never failed you. you but yeah, but you know, when I wanted that uh, <laughs> Mercedes, he, he gave me a pinto. <laughs> so what? <laughs> and I wanted that tea bone, he gave me a bone in. Well, glory. Saying, he said, I'll give you all your needs, and I've never failed you yet. I've never failed you. So he said, in all your ways, acknowledge him. And then get this. You have to learn to expect the results of, trust, of trusting God. Because he says, and he <laughs> shall direct your
Just trust me. Just trust me. And then he says he'll always be there with us. He'll always be there. Don't you like that little annoying voice on your GPS? If you have one in your car? I think Jeanette and I only used ours one time. That's when you folks sent us down to, to uh, <laughs> Gatlinburg. You probably thought that I couldn't get back. But we had a GPS. But that little annoying voice that said, you need to make a U-turn you missed that. Or turn right here. Turn left one block. Turn left in one mile. So you're looking to, you're trying to drive through Pigeon Forge and look at that thing. At the same time, have I gone a mile yet? Jesus says, just place it in my hands. I'll get you there. I'll get you to where I want you to be. Because I have a plan for you. It's sort of like David said, <coughs> when he said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. And surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Why? Because we trust Him. We put it in His hands. I think Isaiah says it this way. When we trust Him, we ask, how long can we trust Him? He said to him that we can trust Him forever. Isaiah chapter 26 and verse 4 said, Trust in the Lord forever because He is everlasting. I know that there are things in this life that we can't trust for one day to the next. But if you'll just trust Him, God says, I'll take care of it. Does that mean that we're not going to have any problems? No, it doesn't. Does it mean we won't have difficult times? No, it doesn't. But it means that even through those, God says, I'm there. I'm there for you. When it seems like we can't see what's going to take place. We can't see at the end of the situation. God says, I'll take care of it. Just trust me. Man. Sometimes we find that difficult don't we? to give to Him. Well, the greatest thing that we give to Him, of course, is ourselves. Say, here I am. I'm trusting you to do something with me. I'm trusting you to do something with me. And aren't you glad that he can mold you and make you? He can cleanse you. He can change your life. And he says, trust me, because one day the finale is coming. And you're going to be there. Just trust me. The song says, only trust him, only trust him, only trust him now. Can you just sing that moment? Only trust him, only trust him, only trust him. Only trust him. Let me ask you, do you trust him? Do you trust him enough to trust him with your whole heart? Do you trust him enough not to lean on your understanding, but to his? Do you trust him enough to always acknowledge him? Do you trust him enough to say, Lord, you leave. I will. Do you trust him forever? Father, this morning, I praise you and I thank you that we know that we have someone we can trust. And that someone is you. So Lord, we trust you with our whole heart. Knowing you'll do all things well. Knowing that you forgive us of our sins. And Lord, knowing that it, salvation comes by the blood of Jesus Christ. Not by what we've done or what we can do. Lord, there may be some here this morning that doesn't trust you. They've never made that decision to trust you as Lord and Savior. Lord, speak to those hearts this morning. Lord, that they may come boldly to you. There may be others who are saved, but yet they've not trusted you enough to, to follow on. Maybe they've never followed you in scriptural baptism. Lord, I just pray they learn to trust you and tell you that tell them that's going to be okay. There's others who need to make decisions about joining this church. But Lord, the greatest thing is that they learn to trust you and that you have a plan for their life. 
respond. Lord, that plan will be what we want it to be. Go with us. Bless this time of invitation. Speak to hearts now, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. As we stand together, please, Jamie, come and lead us in that song. Okay. Number 480, please, and only trust Him. Only trust Him. Only trust Him.